Friday vlog. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, first off, uh, last week when I had the camera vertical, it worked on YouTube. So uh, it was weird though, because in YouTube, when you're not in full screen, it crops it. So it's it's like it looks better. They sort of chopped off the top and the bottom, and it looked like a better ratio in not full screen on YouTube when you hold your phone vertically than full screen when you realize there's a huge gap here and there's a huge gap here. I don't know. It's It was weird. So maybe the answer to the vertical YouTube Facebook situation is figure out what that sort of more square aspect ratio is that they're using and do that. Because that looks pretty decent, actually. But this... Um, you know this vertical 16 by 9 situation it seems unnecessarily long it's like shockingly long when you look at it uh, it's 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 very strange cuz when you look at when you look at this frame it doesn't seem like incredibly wide it it's i mean when you physically see a border around it you notice that it is almost 2 to 1 just by looking at it um, I think it's actually 1.66. Anyway, but it, it looks almost two to one uh, when you have a frame around it. But when you're just looking at it, it doesn't look like that. But when you put it vertically, it's there's a lot of real estate up and down compared to width. Um, so I'm not going to be doing the vertical thing again. That was just annoying. Um, but I did figure out how to do it. I just shot vertically, edited edited sideways, and then on YouTube I just had it turn 90 degrees because YouTube lets you do that. Um, so that's the future apparently. Um, but you know, for actual real work where you do need the vertical frame that YouTube is making you use, um, use a real editor and not iMovie and just figure out what that aspect ratio is and do that. So, um, today's camera tweak, uh, nothing. This is, this is, natural mode just out of the box I'm just seeing what it looks like because um, usually I use natural and it's I, I put a bunch of I lower a bunch of stuff I put contrast down and I put saturation down um, but this is just if you if you if you just turned on the camera and put a battery in it and went to natural this is what it looks like so um, it's, it's for uh, yeah I'm, I'm thinking I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out a look because I'm going to start doing a documentary series and I'm trying to figure out a look that I can just not have to worry about. And I think it's just natural. Because even if I, even if I fuck up the, um, the settings and the settings are different on two different days, I think natural is similar enough to itself that I could get away with it. Um, yeah. So, um, did I write, uh, just the writer's room, but we're chugging along. So that's good. Uh, did I read? I read the trades. Really sad to hear Emmy Rossum is has decided to quit Shameless. Um, cause that was a whole that was a whole thing. She uh, she she was sort of the poster child for pay equality in television because she was not making nearly what her co-star William H Macy was making, and she did this whole campaign to get equal pay, and she got it. And I think the other cast members also got a raise, but I don't think they, I don't know if they ma were able to match. Anyway, but she, she got William H. Macy's pay, which was good for everybody. Um, that was the whole thing. And she's been directing episodes. She's, I mean, she's very much a part of the show. I would say she's the middle of the show, even though William H. Macy's character is supposed to be the middle of the show. Um, but she's the, she's the show and she's been the show's, at least since the middle of season one. Um, and she's, yeah, so she's directed episodes. I don't think she wrote any episodes, but she's very much handling the show. And she's she's decided to, to leave, um, which uh, makes sense. Um, she's been on it for eight years, nine years. So I'm surprised everybody wants to stay. Um, anyway, so I heard that. I'm ha sad to hear that. Uh good for her. I'm, I'm just, my fear when you lose, when you leave a big show while the show is still doing well is that like 
there are so many freak accidents that led to the show being a success that the chances of you replicating that um, it are, I mean, Matthew Perry is like a perfect example of somebody who was on the biggest show of all time and then makes another show every year and they're just, it, it, the, he can't, the, the, the luck factor didn't properly work. So, anyway. Um, also, the Big Bang Theory is ending after this, after this upcoming season, which I'm pretty okay with. Because uh, I think everybody's done. I, they've had 12 seasons, so it makes sense. <clears throat> um, so I've been watching Big Brother. And the, the show itself is pretty entertaining, but the behind-the-scenes stuff... Uh, we had another sort of grim, grim week because uh, the 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 little guy, JC, um, has been saying racist stuff. Has said racist stuff a couple times, and he's just been creepy. He's he's very handsy and he's creepy. Um, it's neither here nor there, but he's also gay. Uh, but. Uh, there's a whole thing where he apparently they caught him on the feeds like groping one of the other guys in bed which is just that's assault so hopefully big brother producers do something about that because that is uh if nothing else not on brand so you know i i, don't, I think the appropriate measures would be pursuing the sexual assault stuff, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, he gets, as my buddy pointed out, he gets really, really good ed edits on the show. He's never, he's never not come off badly, or never not come off great, except for when he said the N-word, which was not great. Um, saw Crazy Rich Asians, and, uh, yeah. It was exactly what I thought it was going to be, and I got no complaints. Not my kind of story, but, uh, it, you know, in the context of the romantic comedy destination wedding kind of story, it's just not my not my genre. But, yeah, it was, yeah I, had no pro I liked it. I, I thought it was good. When the next one comes out, I'll see that one, too. Um, it's all the Happy Time Murders. And, uh, I don't know what I saw. I'm a huge fan of strange stuff, and that was so strange that even I was like, I'm not sure, is this art? Like, I was, yeah. So, it was out there. I guess society will be the judge. I don't think it's doing so good in, uh, um, the box office. So, maybe it was a dud. Uh, so also caught Mississippi Grind, which is a Ryan Reynolds indie movie about gambling, and um, it's pretty good. It was nice to see the the dude from the dude from Rogue One, the bad guy from Rogue One, be like a person. So yeah, it was a it was a sweet movie. Uh, yeah, didn't didn't really break any new ground. Um, we're just chugging along. Uh, writing tip. Oh, I need to. Oh, the crap. I need to open my box office. Okay, so the writing tip. Uh, it's gonna be write out your plot points. Give them each a line or a grid or something or or a note card. And read them, read them in reverse order to see if anything stands out uh, in a bad way. See if see if there's any hangnails. Um, I do this. This is a this is a psychological tip I picked up from I don't know where, but uh, if you if you need to oh I whatever that anyway there was that TV show about the sexy spy, sexy art thief. And the way the easy way to forge signatures is just flip the 
flip the signature upside down because then your brain doesn't see it as letters, your brain sees it as shapes. It's easier to copy a shape than it is a letter. Um, so you flip the you flip the writing upside down and then you just write it and and voila. Um, sort of the same sort of the same strategy, except creatively. Um, also, when you have a big grid, you have like a you have like an Excel sheet of um, numbers or patterns or something, and they're all pretty similar. Uh, if you go backwards through it instead of forwards through it, um, your brain yeah your brain disconnects and you see it as you see it as pieces instead of one unbroken pattern. Um, so so basically that just the creative version of that where you just you just take it for what it is and then something something doesn't fit maybe this character said the wrong thing there that kind of thing um, I don't know if I explained that properly or not uh, box office let's see here well I said it's gonna be crazy rich Asians happy time murders the Meg mission impossible mile 22 which by the way apparently mile 22 is getting panned and I'm just just laughing. Um, I got three out of five because I mixed the Meg, got number two, and the Happy Time Murders got number three. So the Happy Time Murders did real bad then. What's their budget? Well, they'll make their money back. Their budget was $40 million, so they'll be okay. To their credit on the Happy Time Murders, um, uh, Melissa, uh, whatever her name is, that was the smallest she's played a role since like Gilmore Girls, so that was nice. Um, so this weekend, I'm just gonna have to go for it. Let's see. Okay, so this weekend, Searching is coming out. Oh, but it's got a small release. I'm hearing great reviews about Searching, by the way. That's the movie that takes place on a like a screen, a computer screen. Um, it was a festival, darling, and so I'm 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 optimistic. I I watched Unfriended, which was the horror movie version of that, and I couldn't sit through it. I just there's too many things to the the reading is what screwed me up. The if you had to read a text. I would have to like shut down, read the text, and then restart, and I would miss the dialogue after, like the timing. I'm a slow enough reader that it screwed me up. So Unfriended was incredibly frustrating, but I heard Searching was great, so. I'm gonna say Crazy Witch Asians, uh, The Meg, Mission Impossible, Christopher Robin, and whatever Operation Finale is. I'm just gonna go right off the Right off the list. Um, we'll see what happens. Don't know what Operation Finale is. And uh, my recommend. Um, if you can find it, go see the Happy Tire Murders because I'm just curious as to. I just can't get a read on it. I. It's either it's either really stupid and terrible. Or it's good and I am not sure but my knee-jerk reaction says it's stupid and terrible and usually usually I go with my gut I'm not sure because I thought death to smoochie which is actually very similar in universe was real stupid but then I watched it later and was like wow this is one of the greatest satires I've ever experienced that was that Ed Norton movie where he was basically Barney the Dinosaur. Anyway, so that's it. It's a low energy one today.